ever since the win in Lithuania for Scotland ensured that they and France would be the 100 percenters. The eyes of Peru repeat itself here. This is James McFadden. Lilian Churam across there. Walter Smith might have been slightly surprised when he got hold of that French team sheet. I know that he did feel. McFadden, it's his first taste of any sort of action since he was injured in the win against Lithuania. The last questions of Chiram. He's allowed to play on here, McFadden. James McFadden! Well, that's exactly what we want to see from James McFadden. He's the one fellow who's not going to be faced by the names in this French side. Wasn't prepared to give it up. And the final effort can back up Paul Hartley here, who was in a little bit too early, if anything. That's what we want to see from James McFadden. If he is doing that in the wide areas, hopefully we can get midfield players like Hartley into the box. Now Claude McAlealy. Ferguson hunts him down. His first start back as captain after an injury hit start to the season. And half a dozen games for Rangers. He's given it away here. Thierry Henry. The free kick has been given. Well, not a difficult decision. It was Gary Caldwell who's desperate to try and get a challenge in before Thierry Henry got inside the 18-yard box. A little change of pace to complete there. Clumsy challenge. A real chance here for France to work great goal. Thierry Henry, who scored his last two goals in the Champions League and the English Premiership with his head, now tries to add to his tally for his country from this free kick. It's a big target to Craig Gordon's left, I have to say. Must be inviting. It's Henri! Hit the woodwork! Trezeguet looks to follow in for France. Now Sagnol. And behind, Scotland escape. Well, it seems slow to react here, Craig Gordon. I think he may have been, been forced. He's expecting that to go to his right-hand side. Just been out fox by Henri. Look at the way he works the ball. He actually gets on it. Late whip onto the post. And a real let off for Scotland. Serve to silence the hand and roll. It's looking ominous with Henri. Inching forward again. Brought down by Weir. The free kick given. Oh, David Weir's complaining, but I really don't think he's got a case here. It's a step over that takes Henri clear. That's not a difficult decision for the referee. Again, that's another downside of defending is deep as You're making challenges on the edge of your box that you'd rather be making much further up the pitch. Florent Maluda, the left footer from Leon, is the other man in the mix. It's Henri again, this time much more comfortable for Craig Gordon. Well, he took up a far more central position there, Craig Gordon. The one he was going to spill it. He will be back, of course, uh, on Wednesday against the Ukraine. This is for Maluda for France. Oh, he's given a free kick, I think. A good attempt by Christian Daly to win it. Well, I took the top of the ball, but it's certainly a free kick. Caldwell doesn't want him to drop too deep. In by Ribery Vieira, 1 0 France. Well, but the up. flag is up. It's into a horrible area for Craig Gordon. Not convinced he could come for this. I'll tell you what, he's on side. Very little daylight there. Don't think the white shot did him any favours. Maybe flagged it up that he's gone just a fraction off. Run between McAlealy in front of James McFadden and the two centre backs behind him. Really struggling to get him on the ball. Maluda. Ribéry, the return now, brings in Sagnol. Sagnol, great pace on that ball. The flag stayed down as well. He's outside the front post here, he's just got to get the slightest little nick in this. Again, it's a tight decision, he's in slightly early, maybe a little bit behind him. Win against Spain in the World Cup knockout phase. Wasn't to be for Vieira, not that time anyway. He's one of three French players making inroads forward here. It's Patrick Vieira trying to work it through. Come on, Presley. The flag up. Trezeguet denied. 
That's a correct decision again. Assistant kept the flag down as he made the run in, but the minute he touches the ball, he's offside. He's offside there. And when he takes part here, the assistant's got to put his flag up. Sanyol, one of those whipped in crosses, Maluda! It's not far away, and that's what we'll see from. Play only does drift left, Maluda will become a second striker. And he's right in the central area here as that half volley sits up for him. That's not enough, it's always moving left to right away from that far post. Midfielder. And by Christian Daly. Very, very quick to blow for a foul, and then Lee McCullough was too well. Henry again. Maluda goes for distance, and a fine save by Gordon. And Trezeguet's offside. Fletcher hunting down Abidal, who has pace to burn. Back to his club colleague Gregory Coupe. A good pressure from Darren Fletcher. And he tried to press Abidal, Hartley and Ferguson's corner of the match. And you can hear by the roar around Hamden, it is a Scottish corner. It is Paul Hartley to take it. And saved by Gregory Coupe. It's a clean header from Gary Caldwell. He's going to do well to score from there. Where is it? Penalty spot 12 yards out, just about. With the defender on either post, it's going to do really well. It's effectively a flat back five that we're playing with. And this is Ribery threatening to get in behind it. He's got the better of McCulloch. And able to pick out anyone with his cross though. Especially in that role there this, this afternoon. So much running to do. Henry. Lovely ball slid through the floor on the Luda, but terrific defending by Gary Caldwell. First corner. Song is forward. A slip from Bailey as he got it clear. It's back with Ribery. The error stayed in there. It was Boomsong, I think, who threw himself at it and got the contact, but got the contact over. Well, when you're as deep as that, you're always liable to lose one from a header. There's good pace in the ball, and he hung the corner up, but there's a bit more pace about that. He's certainly within scoring range there build up to this match he says he sees Scotland as a real group rival in terms of qualification and showed enough in the opening two qualifiers and they've showed enough in the opening 45 minutes here that they have enough to frustrate France they've had to ride their luck Thierry Henry rattled the post Patrick Vieira rifled the back of the net but Scotland stands strong half time it is Scotland nil France nil Scotland would certainly settle for that scoreline in 45 minutes time but boy is it going to be a long 45 minutes for those men in dark blue down there only half the job is done Rugby League Stadium against Sheffield United that's the only match practice of note they've had in uh, recent weeks Ferguson he's got the better of Makaleli here did well to get anything into the box at all. Two against one in the touchline. Fletcher's challenge, he's got away with it, no foul. And he spins an inviting ball for McFadden to chase. Across comes Boomsong! McFadden off balance and wide. First clean chance of the match. Boomsong's looking for a free kick, reckoned it was tough. He looked second favourite here, James McFadden, but all of a sudden he's in behind Boomsong. And even though the angle's closing, well, that has to go down as a decent half chance for Scotland. Arguably the first of the game as well. Danger signs at the other end as Gordon takes the ball. Now, is he clattered by Thierry Henry? I think the free kick's been given. It's much wrong that he doesn't know much about that. His eyes are on the ball. This makes a bridge there for Craig Gordon. There's another decision we'll take. Well, 
first clean chance you would say of the match. James McFadden, two against one again as he's been all day. And he had a little tug there on Boomsong, blind side of the referee. And Wallace Smith for a moment. <laughs> Thought we might have been going ahead. That'd be Trissigate. That's the man who's going to make way. One of the players in the first the half to have the ball in the back of the Scotland 14, net. Louis and here comes Louis Saha. And we know his club manager, Sir Alex Ferguson, who looks on from the stands here, wasn't happy about the fact he was called up because of the injuries. He's out, you would assume then he won't be too happy seeing Saha come on for the closing half hour or so. The last couple of years, John Allen Boomsong hasn't really put a That's foot rock for France tonight. He'll be tested again here, Hartley. With the tire ball in, didn't it? Didn't get inside of his foot round it. James McFadden in a good position otherwise. To deliver. Weir attacks it, got ahead on it. It's back out with Hartley. Could have gone anywhere. They'll settle for another corner. He gets a little nudge here, David Weir. Doesn't really get anything clean on him. Oh, Hartley trying to zip that back across Gregory Coupe's goal. End of the pitch at the moment. A little respite for the defence and a little hope for the attack. Take two from Hartley, it's into a good area. Scotland have scored! Gary Caldwell! Scotland lead France by one goal to nil. And Hamden goes absolutely berserk. Oh, would you believe it? I think if we were going to get one, it was always going to be from a set piece. And even with a defender in either post, there's nothing that France can do yet. Cordwell just rings the back. Oh, it just sticks his leg out. It's a terrific ball in from Hartley. David, we have taken Marcus under the ball at the front post, and Walter Smith can't quite believe it. Pinch yourself, it's true, it's Scotland 1, France 0. <laughs> 32 places in the FIFA rankings between these two. I can't start thinking about what it would mean in terms of the table just yet as Sahar gets the header on. Just trying to help into the top corner, he can't get any pace on that. Oh, the back to go here. Trying to help on, maybe thinking Greg Gordon's coming for that. Oh well, I could have believed it. What a lift this will give the legs of these Scottish players out there, hitting this ground. Absolutely bouncing now. Made the World Cup finalists by one goal to nil. Hartley. Now Teal! Well, there's no support. He's got to take the shot on. He's trying to open his body and find the inside. On this ground, the last time Scotland were here in a 2 0 win. Taken by Sanyol. You can see what he was trying to do. Watch up for offside anyway, but he's really trying to get around the back. Gary Caldwell certainly did get round the back four. It was a great corner in from, from Paul Hartley. Not one that Gregory Coupe could come for. David Weir taking Vera under the ball at the front post. Gary Caldwell round the back. The disappointing thing there for France will be that how low the ball was. Nobody got their head on it. Oh, what a moment for the Scotland centre back. What a story that time. O'Connor. A captain leading from the front, Barry Ferguson, slid in towards Hartley. This could seal it for Scotland, but Sharam back in the nick of time. Again, it's just a tired first touch from Paul Hartley because Eric Abidal is struggling to get around the back here from the left back position. Better first touch, and Paul Hartley's getting a left foot short away there. Just got away from him there. Scotland will be quite happy with the corner, though. Was the route to the goal. Surely it can't happen again, can it? Hartley, Coupe comes. 
Well, dropped it. No free kick. Ripped by Maluda. He's gone back looking for Makaleli. That was well won by Barry Ferguson. Now Sagnol. Weir with the block. Maluda. He's left Fletcher behind him, but didn't he do well to get back to Aaron Fletcher? Oh, I have to be so sure that Aaron Fletcher he was taking the ball. So easy to give away a penalty. He's wrong side here as he makes the challenge, Darren Fletcher. He's got to be spot on. Spot on, he was. Maluda's corner again. That take a touch off call, well it did, it's another corner. I don't think he knew much about it here, Gary Caldwell. Ends up ahead of the ball there. We knew the pressure would come from France, the third consecutive corner kick. Well away by Caldwell, they hit. Drilled in by Abidal, Saha! It's a difficult one to take first time, but they're starting to get a little bit of joy in the wide areas, and maybe again down to timeless. They're starting to get service into the box now. And earlier on in the match, we were making sure there was nothing coming into the box in the wide areas. So I always leaning back there. Here's Maluda. Henri! Oh, it's a chance. It's a chance. Gary Caldwell pointing the finger at Christian Bailey here. And Oh, he just gets across the front of the Scotland cool back there. That is a terrific chance. Here's Malud who's come across to this right-hand side. Luis Saha now. Went for the cheeky near post one. Oh, he's trying to get that back across the face of goal. Again, will do nicely. So near, but yet so far. It's Sagnol, and it's wide by Saha. Came off a Scotland player, though, on the way through. You're always liable to lose one when you're as deep as this. Right on top of Craig Gordon. And again, we see how... Sagnol's corner, not the best he's hit this evening. Teal couldn't hook clear. France through Abidal, right back into the mix. Here's Louis Saha now. Fletcher snaps at the heels of his club mate and Hartley clear. Now O'Connor bursts forward. Ferguson alongside him. Try to lob it over Coupe. Well, it was Makaleli's reluctance to go here. Makaleli more concerned with the central area to allow Gary O'Connor to try and chip Coupe. Always oh, ambitious. Those three, potentially, like, three precious, precious points. This is Henri, wasn't expecting it to come to him. Sagnol, Gordon's got hold of it. Yeah, all came from Stephen Presley, ending up underneath the ball as it came into the box there. They have been getting joy in the way there. Is Sagnol into two. Three months ago, we're contesting the World Cup final. Have one last chance to get back into it. Saha's header. The referee looks at his watch. And Gary Caldwell's goal has achieved the impossible. Scotland have beaten France and take their place at the top of Group B. If they had a chance, it was the smallest of chances, but they have done it. Cue the celebrations, cue the party. It couldn't happen, could it? Well, it just has. You know the only thing we could demand of Walter Smith though when he took over was that he made us as good as we could possibly be and I don't think anyone can doubt he's done that. We're organised, we're motivated, they want to play now, they want to pull the jersey on but before they were reluctant and they were dropping like flies when squads were named and this is just a memorable result. A bit like the old days here in the old ground and a real moment to savour.